Okay, hey, we've got Gary Davis, Alan Anderson, Randy Wren, and we're at the Neutral Zone Studios. And Randy had a great idea. He wanted us to, to tour the studio and go through these sets and kind of reminisce about what our favorite parts of the studio were and then maybe a few anecdotes uh, from filming there. And I wanted to start right here because this is just a nondescript entryway. There's the, the, the door to the studio and the, y this is the back. This is the back of the studio. It's wood and just, just material. But then when these doors come open, it's like walking into Nirvana. Whoa, see, we just stepped away from the back and we got into this. I mean, wow. This place is lit just like the original series. And, you know, and I was given my tour by Mike Bednar and one of the, the, the original construction persons of this set. This is my fondest memory when these doors opened up and I went, this is, this is awesome. This is Star Trek. <laughs> what about you guys? What, what do you think when you see this, this part? Eight-year-old me wants to run down the corridor. That's right. And Randy? I remember us walking down the corridor right there, sneaking up on the conference room with guns waiting for a big uh, That's right. confrontation that we were going to have. It turned out to be a surprise party. That's right. That was our first episode that we did a reality check where we were bouncing back and forth between reality and uh, and Star Trek. So this was the camera angle I think that we had. You know, and then like we highlighted the, the crew because we had the crew Two in this. With the boom mics, one here and one here. Yeah. Action. Phasers to stun. No, more like... Phasers to stun. Oh, come on. You all worry about my line, you worry about yours. Are you suddenly the critic? But well, we, we did pass a set. We would, what, the first set that comes, what comes around is, is Sick Bay. Have we had any memorable scenes in Sick Bay? Oh, have we? Oh, yeah. Well, go for it. Right, Randy, give us, give us, give, this is a great shot of Sick Bay. So tell us about Sick Bay. Well, right here is where uh, Sergei, Sergei uh, Yuzikov, did his first scene with us as a dead Russian colonel. That's right. <laughs> and, uh... Call it. Note the time. Computer, note time of death. Working. Uh, Fred Vlad, um, he was lying right there. He was luckier. He, he lived and he was our guest star on that episode. Yeah. Please stay calm. You, you, you are Russian? Yes, I'm Russian, but. Did I, did I press button? Did I cancel? I'm sure you did, Mr. Bogmatov. No, you do not understand. Must cancel. All will be lost. Must cancel. Uh, more things change. Oh, goodness. Listen to that. Yeah, so, very... That's something that we have to put up with all the time. And, the and, and guy, yeah. Alan, our sound guy, t tell us about when you're filming filming in the, in the sound and you, you hear that sound. Oh, uh, old for vehicle, old for motorcycle, old for airplane, old for crane. Uh, well, it, it, it's a challenge, but uh, we get through it. I remember uh, miking this area up with Dan, of course, and we put, uh, because we we're getting the wide shot and because the shadows in here, it was hard to put the boom up here. So what we had to do is put a wireless microphone here because the camera was over there facing this way and another one here so we can get Joan here and Victoria here. And then we actually moved this out of, out of the way. Can't wait to see the Commodore again. And I am damn glad to be back. Glad to have you back, Commander. You rest now. Welcome home. so that we can actually get them on the bed part. 
Dara Bruton was standing right over there, and as she was talking, uh, then I had to hide another microphone over on that side so that uh, uh, our, what is her name? Uh, Piper's friend. Uh, Dara. 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 That's right. Dara was on that side, but we had to put the microphone. The camera would have seen it if she moved. Right. <laughs> So I had three wireless mics around here to catch the the ambience, and of course, with wireless mics being omnidirectional, they don't reject things from other ways. So anything happened, the popping on the the roof, the vehicle yeah. going by were and Dara amplified. And Dara is one of those actresses that when she when she emotes, you you feel her emotion. So when she was standing. You know, looking at her countrymen because she was Russian and these were cosmonauts, and and she goes, you know, we we are Russian, we have bond, and it just it just I'm sorry, it made me tear up because that 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 girl can really emote her lines. Wait, he's trying to tell me something. It could be important. Okay, but he's been through a lot. He needs to be sedated. And. Oh, and then Doc Farrell making sure that 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 no no patient ends up like that. <laughs> this guy, this guy right here, who me made these things. Come alive. Oh yeah, that was these fun. Things come alive and post, and the buttons go up and down, and the little arrows. Blink, blink, bump, bump, the ship. But the cosmonauts were coming back to life or dying. And then yeah, they they drop to zero and they die and they die. All right, let's step out of out of sick bay, and we're we're just going to ignore that this, this this breaks the illusion of the of this. But this is a this is an amazing piece. Set. Alan, tell us about this. This is actual uh, reproduction of the original Hage era helm, which also doubled as the transporter council. This is our buddy John Selms' production, and you might know him as Quincy. This is an actual picture of it on set. We actually used blue painter's tape because they wouldn't let us repaint the uh, the rails re uh, blue. And these are actual screenshots from the episode The Cage. So you can see that it is an exact replica, goosenecks and all. And the goosenecks do turn on. Oh, my goodness gracious. That and is amazing. There's a poster for Exeter Trek. And you'll see John. You'll see Larry, who's in our set our things as well. Ugh. See nice things that that really interesting that are there in behind the scenes of the sets that that are hidden away. Engineering. Uh, let's just continue. We'll come back back to engineering last because what's what's the next most exciting thing about these sets is is the transporter room because you know th this was a wonderful piece of of storytelling because you know the original series couldn't afford yet a shuttlecraft to get their people down to the planet and back, so they created this transporter i think star trek was one of the first shows that really highlighted this in a, in a weekly in a weekly series the purpose of the transporter room was to save money save money because they didn't have money for the for the solar craft well they didn't have they didn't want to well at first they were thinking about how we're going to get the ship on the planet that's right that's right that was, that's right but time consumption yeah they're like well in the future they might have a device that would be able to instantly make you go from one place to another so it's just like we still do, we lock the camera, cycle the lights, put the people in or take them out, cycle the lights, and we're done. Click it six times and click it, and then get an empty pallet, and then we could we could fade them away. What's the, what's some great stories about the transporter? Uh, the the lady standing right on that pad right there, with a finger pointed to the oh camera. yes right standing right about there yeah she and uh, telling him but to. Back off. Astrid, no, I'll go. Someone has to go down there and help stop Kataka, Captain. I volunteer. No, we'll find another way. We've only got seconds, Captain. You need to take a step back and stop wasting time. And for the record, Captain, I know you're trying. Energize. Yep, that was a that was a we are many and you know, and she was heading back down to the planet. Well, going to the planet to join her husband and taking over the mushroom monster entity to uh, to balance out the evil. And uh, that was that was an amazing thing. And the, you know, talking about emotion there, but 
hijacking the hijacking the transporter to to, to beam down and and one of the things that somebody was here it was it was Royal Weaver who was the 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 facilities manager says you know you should shoot the shot where you could just see her face because she's beaming down to her death and I go that is amazing because you know normally when we do a transporter shot it's way back here and you just get to see the whole body transporting but every once in a while you 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 want to highlight who's beaming down Now, I, I call that the beauty transporter shot because and it was it was a actually I think it was this this angle I took the shot and and we we got to see her face as she beamed down to the planet. And how about the two Russian stewards that were beaming down to go to start? Oh yeah, and the uh, uh, academy dean of admissions was standing right on that bed right there, and they were talking to each other. So we we got up on the on the platform itself and we were filming her. Her end of the conversation. Then we flipped over and filmed his point of the conversation. Then we looked around, and I was down there, and the dean was talking. It's been nice, but I really have to be on my way. Chief, get me out of here. I did not know you are going. You said I should go to Lake and think of you. I also said I had one last surprise for you, and you would see me sooner than you thought. This is a very dynamic set, and it's full. You know, it's a, it's it takes everything. You, you any any angle on this set, you can shoot. You can close the doors. Even when the doors open, you, you've got the the corridor back there, so it becomes part of the story. Everything that 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 makes this room even special. Granted, it's not Dominion related. Is on that hat right there. We had Star Trek royalty. That's right. Miss Nichelle Nichols was there in 2019 when she came to film her documentary, Breaking Barriers. Oh. So we had Aurora herself. Her herself. Oh. This this place has seen a lot of people. All right. So now we're back out. Okay. I think we should go to engineering because we've, we've done these things. Now, engineering wasn't part of the original sets when this the studio was created. It was eventually added by Star Trek Continues, but just an amazing set. And, you know, in in the original series and when they did in the 60s, this was actually up there by the bridge. And but this is way over in a different building. But, you know, you got Scotty's, Scotty's, uh, uh, Doug, his, his little control center. And, you know, this is where Denson, you know, had to admit that, uh, sorry, Captain. We we left the emergency. We left the parking brake on, and that's why the ship can't go. We're all set down here, Captain. Warp and impulse engines are at your command. What was the problem? Uh, yeah, we we, we had uh, technical difficulty. What specifically was the problem, engineer? <clears throat> tell him, Stephen. Yeah, tell him, Stephen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Come again. We forgot to release the parking brake. <laughs> and that's why the ship can't go. <laughs> the, uh, the thing I got to do, I came out around this corner. I formed up there. I said, no, 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 that goes there. That goes there. Got it? Which was a callback to Star Wars. No, no, no. This goes there. That goes there. Got it? That's right. With, uh, technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. And now this is another beautiful piece of, of artistry. You know, on 2D, you know, this looks like that goes back 20, 30 feet. But in actuality, in reality, that only goes back about 10 feet, I would say. But a forced perspective makes it look like it goes way, 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 way back. And I, it's always been some debate exactly what that is. I always think that is the impulse term on the, on the on the primary saucer, but everybody has a different opinion. But and but these and the, are the dilithium matrix chambers and and I know I made this. I'm not sure if it still works. I'm like, it still comes. There you go. But that's where 
the dilithium crystal should go. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually wrong. But it does look gorgeous there, and I think that this is even a dilithium crystal that Chris Duhan might have dropped off, and you know that was that was powering his dad's car for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and what are these? Are these? Well, when the original ah, oh. what that Ray found these because these are actual uh, garden decorations. Oh, okay. And because they hold their color. Yes. In this hot Georgia humid weather we have. Yeah. What they really were these, and they had to keep repainting them because they would dull quick. What they are is oh my is goodness ball. gracious, they're just balling. There are many stories where the the uh, Prop people would get pissed because Shepard would kick it all over engineer. Oh, goodness gracious. Exactly, a minion vault, seven inch diameter. That's why Ray got these because they turn to this real quick and they have to be repaid. Oh, man. When people come here and see this, the two things, the biggest thing people want to know is where are the cylinders that were right here? That's right. See, that Kirk used to hit Kong. Yeah. If you look at all the episodes, it's the only one that it's there. <laughs> also, the other thing people realize is this section was taken out, so they had broke the fight scene. That fight scene. That's right. This was not here during that episode in that fight scene. That's right. It's gone. That's right. I love but it. People forget that they were making a TV show, so things got changed all over. Yeah, a lot. My movie, uh, Transporter Road, we were just in there. The one episode where they go back to the '60s and beam up the uh, the Air Force security guy. The ends. And he asked, "Are you hungry?" That's right. That is the only episode of their food replicators on the wall, uh, on the bulkhead. In, in, in. That's right. I have totally forgotten about that. But the detail on this is amazing. You know, those are, aren't those foam carved pieces right there yeah. that they lifted up and painted? Yeah, I mean, it, they wouldn't build that out of wood, but it was just so, so heavy. Yeah. Oh my God, it was, yeah, exactly. Boyle Weaver again knew that there was a somebody in Jacksonville dial the NC's serve them if you'd be wound bad. So they recreated everything. Now, these really were made out of styrofoam back in the 60s because these were the uh, packing material for an IBM Selected typewriter, and Desi Lu just got a whole shipment of them, and they just dumpster died. Right. Great. Stuck on the wall. Because I heard that exact story where they, where they would go to build something, they just go dumpster diving and go, hey, this looks good. Paint it. Let's do it. Earhart took over Desi Lu. The bean counters were upset because they found out that it cost $65,000 an episode more than NBC was paying them. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, goodness gracious. So that's why they wanted to cancel it after the second season. But the right writing campaign got it one more season, so to purposely do it, they shifted the night it was on so that their target audience. Oh, wow. See. Already. Oh, whoa, whoa. This, now, this is an amazing piece. Isn't that a lampshade? Yes. <laughs> all these things, all the plantars, everything are designed to be able to be moved around. So I'm make the, this one corridor look like it's somewhere else. Because I, I think I was pointing out earlier that one corridor is all you have. Actually, it's a half a half a, a circular corridor, but it's supposed to resent, resent represent every deck on the ship right you just you just change your plantons change where everything's at and it uh do it from a different angle and the nice thing about being a uh, curved you don't see the other end right so you can actually do it in segments and be in different parts of the ship and i've i've always just marveled over this shot Face and close the door and oh yeah the black on it and you're a different place but I've always marveled at this shot because as you walk down, you know, more set is just coming into view. And it just depends on how far down you go. And and, and the same thing with the reverse angle. You know, the more you go, the more you see. And then, yeah, I, I love these little dedication things that we have here. You know, a memory of, of Grant Amara, you know, plays Sulu for a Star Trek Continues, you know, after he has to what birth and death. Oh, I'll be darned. I never noticed that. His SCC is his, is his birth and death. I love that. And then we just happen to be close to the captain's captain's quarters where, you know, this this reads the, the first captain of the Enterprise, Captain Robert April, which I thought was really interesting. And that just brings us right to the captain's, captain's cabin. Oh. Favorite scene? Favorite scene would have to be when I shot that... Uh, um, the Redemption at Red Medusa, where I first, first got to act with the fabulous Victoria Avalon. I didn't mean to scare you. 
I buzzed. When you didn't answer, I got worried. I'm sorry, Doctor. Is there something I can do for you? Does sick bay have everything that you need? It does. The only thing it's missing is you. You had an appointment an hour ago for a routine examination, remember? I'm sorry, Doctor. I lost track of time. I've been studying these records. They're so complete. So concise. But... But what? But they don't tell me what the hell really happened! Jason, when is the last time you had any sleep? If you don't get some rest, I'm going to have to take you off duty and put you on medical leave. You know, this was, we shot this at the end of the day when she first arrived, but I'd already been here like six, seven hours, and I was so tired. But Hold for siren. But, <laughs> hold for siren. but, but, but Victoria, I don't know what it was, but Victoria just, she just pulled that, that performance out of me. Because here, it's right. The other camera hole? Yeah, pull that out. Most people, even as a series, because the cameras are so huge, to get depth of field, they actually make camera holes. Ah, oh, they put the camera on the backside and shoot through the hole. That's right. Depth of field, otherwise the camera would be so, oh, you wouldn't be able to see the person sitting at the door. Oh, to see the people coming in and out of the door, and only for a short period of time. Because we got Victoria coming through the door, and myself sitting at my desk reviewing reviewing some footage of and they're so complete so accurate well oh, god tell us what the that's right happened. and i love my scene where we we had the data disks here and i used this hand to wipe them off but then in the close-up close it was this hand and nobody saw that nobody saw that And oh, the, and when she was crying on the side of the bed, oh, uh, how's we got eaten by the monster and monster? We are many, and yeah. Oh, I get, I get misty eyed just thinking about it. We all did that that day. We were filming it. I mean, she was. Oh, what was her name? Um, gosh darn it, we're terrible with names. But yes, we'll fill it in later. But the actress was there grieving her husband, and I'm standing where the camera w was, and I was over here actually sitting on the deck watching and we have must have had 12 people over here filming this and it, she really just made me cry you'll never be able to come back will you no Astrid my physical shell is gone but all that made up the person that you loved is still here I miss you so much. Oh, but but that leads me to this next piece. This is the most annoying piece of this set. <laughs> it, looks, it looks it like looks the like paint, paint smudge. But what it is is it's the light from this mirror. See? <laughs> it goes away. But every time we film, we it looks sort of a mistake. It we looks like, mistakes. wait a minute, those guys are really falling down on the job. We have to cover the mirror. But yeah, you go over here and, and you've got the full uh, the full dresser and the mirror. And we used that shot too, where she was she was looking in the mirror at at herself and and then matter of fact she wasn't tall enough, so we had to put a uh, an apple box down there so she could stand up. And her husband says, Could you pass could you pass me a shirt, please? And then she tosses him a shirt and then you see it's a rich. It's a red shirt, that's right. So you know, dum dum dum, someone's going to die. Wayne, are you sure you're ready for this? This what? This away mission? They can be really dangerous. Well, try to understand, Astrid. I want to contribute. I want to make a difference. And nobody's ever done that by playing it safe. I understand that, and maybe that's why I love you, but promise me you're gonna be careful. Hey, we have a bridge game next Wednesday, and you're gonna make a much better partner alive. Yes, of course. I will be as careful as I can possibly be, given the circumstances. Now, toss me a uniform shirt, will ya? And see the size of this room and the, and the, the lights and the angles Sound is a challenge, again, in this room. 
It's like a uh, passenger with baggage, two of them. You've got uh, Dan playing Chamberlain, and he's uh, talking to Frank. Well, because of this, we actually hit the, the wireless microphone here because Dan was standing here to catch that, and I put the transmitter over here, put that all over in that spot. Not enough of that. How about a bite to eat? Couldn't eat a bit more. I've already been to the officer's mess. Well, then... How about we find us some glasses? Hmm, I think that would be a wonderful idea. I have some glasses right over here. And then uh, when we had uh, Donna and Frank talking, that was a challenge because he is naturally really loud and she is naturally really soft. He had to ride the faders on that one. But that one was, we hit the, the transmitter underneath uh, over here in the picture. I remember that, yeah. You're exhausted, get some rest. Dr. Farrell has offered the tour of medical, and I cannot refuse that. No, you can't refuse that. You have an interesting time. Because, because of the way the camera angle was over there, and with the lighting, you can't either put the boom or the shadows, so the microphone itself is, if you look very carefully, you can see it, but it's barely right there, and the transmitter fits right back in this little cubby right Oh, amazing. And yeah, you know, make sure the transmitter is facing the wall because of the way the little blue light shines through the oh. But this set is 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 it's just as memorable as everything. You know, there's right there's where John Sims turned into the gangster. That's right, he yeah. turns into the gangster. Oh. All right. All right, Commodore. You got me dead to rights. I'm ready to go to the slammer, see? The big house, the joint, the hooskow, the concrete country club. I did it, and I'd do it again, see? I am not here to take you in. I'm actually here to ask you for help. And there's, there's, I made that, well, this is one of many that I've made, these these desktop viewers that have, have really, have, it, it's held up for his age. You know, it's, you know, I wasn't much of a prop maker at first, but I do these and they, they hold up pretty well. And I love watching other productions and I see that they use it. But everybody contributes. All of this stuff is just come from dedicated folks who bring and adds to the flavor of this. What's that? Painting here. Oh, yeah. we Yeah, tell us about that, Randy. Uh, there was a guy in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, at the sets when they were there. We went out there to look to, uh, to check into using those sets because we didn't have access to these. And... Uh, there was a guy painting a painting, and we didn't know what it was. And as the day went by while we were out there, it just began, began to take form, and eventually it became this. I actually, this is a, a smaller copy of it. That uh, It was originally about twice that size. But I thought it would look good in here, and uh, I took it and had a, a, a copy made. And now it's, it's just part of the set. It's part of the set. And we're twinning. Yeah, we noticed today that, that Alan had his USS ISS. I looked what I chose. I always have my hand in front of it. There we go. I had my USS Dominion ISS. He just has to be the odd man out. <laughs> okay, let's go across the hall to one of the most versatile spaces I think that this that this place has. You know, our, our pilot, we were in here and this area was the bar. And, you know, the bartender was there and they put a bar there and these tables, you know, anchors away. We first, we first met the, the crew that would become, uh, uh, the, the steadfast adventurers of our Dreadnought Dominion series. Your accomplishments are quite impressive. Thank you, Doctor. And Ensign, you have earned quite a reputation of being a genius in astral navigation and piloting. It's in the tough genes. There have been navigators in my family for as far back as we can find records. Not only in space, but on Earth's oceans as well. But this space has been a bar. It's been a cargo hold. We used it for the Romulan commander quarters. <laughs> We are completing a patrol of the neutral zone border, now Alpha Oneus 3. There have been no incidents other than a brief run-in with the Federation Warship Dominion. Um, 
what else has this been used? The, the, the Romulan, uh, all come over this way. We had a two different Romulan bridges, one facing this way, ways it. Oh, but what did we do here? Wasn't that, that then y'all when Aaron Gray was here for Star Trek continued. Oh, that's right. Right there. That's right auxiliary here. control. And there was flats here with a green screen in yeah. outside. So they may have the Commodore's office over there where you had the bar was Lolani's quarters. Oh, okay. So this is uh, Star Trek continues episode two. And this is where Lou Ferrigno stood during the yes. drop here. Yes. Which, uh, where Vic gets a kick Vic, but he flying kick, uh, um, kick, uh, kick uh, Lou, but he doesn't really do it. He does the flying drop kick, comes short, and then falls down. And then what he does is he takes his boots uh, off and puts them on his hand so he can actually make contact with Lee. <laughs> and then Lou lays down uh, and sits up in, uh, on action. Cause, oh, and he splices it together and it looks like Vic drop kicked Lou and he went down. Because when he first did it, he actually did it to the stunt coordinator who went all the way back. Into this. Oh, no. no. You can't do that to Lou. Oh, no. And, you know. Just had hip surgery. Oh no! Back up. So, and, and if I'm not mistaken, Star Starship Farragut used this space for the quarters for their for their chief engineer. I remember that wooden thing being in the background for her quarters. So they they th 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 this place is what's that? I want to get a little clips. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Little videos. Yeah, we each one put one it. Yeah, we can we could do a slideshow so everybody can see all the different ways. Yeah, this space has been used. But what is this space? But this space is auxiliary control, auxiliary control or swing set because we it it gets morphed into whatever else needed to be for whatever. I mean, cargo hold in one episode where everything's here and they're shooting this way and it was like like the cargo bay. But Randy, how many times have we used this to depict a bridge? Right over here is where we were introduced to our Romulan commander, uh, played by John Savage. That's what's on screen. This is Captain Jason Brousseau of the Federation. You have captured a Romulan vessel in neutral space. You have no jurisdiction here. Release it immediately. Drake. Uh... And uh, that's that was where she first appeared, and she has become a regular member of the show. Just uh, all of us as regular as one of our our um, bridge crew, right? And, and I can't wait to see the the revised Romulan bridge again, uh, which for Valador, which we we flipped we flipped this around this and turned it around ninety degrees, and it yeah. was uh, Commander Katakas. That's right, yeah. you saw Commander Katakas bridge for the for the Mock Ties hammer. Greetings. I am Captain Jason Brousseau of the Starship Dominion. I know who you are, Broussard. That's Brousseau. We've been watching you for quite some time. I am Captain Kataka of the warship Muktai's Hammer. We hail from the planet Vincentia 5. Then we, we hid, Ooh, we hid that. <laughs> then we turned it around. Oh, halfway around. Yeah. And it was the bridge of the... Ed the Velvet General. Oh, the Vancians. Gosh, yes. What are you waiting for? After them. When we catch them again, I will not be so generous. So we... And the, the trick to using the same space multiple times is to light it differently. So this place would look entirely different red. It would look entirely different dark. And it looks totally different with with greens and yellows, and especially putting a wall slat there. Yeah. The wall slat's not there anymore. Uh, it's like backside to Imperial. Uh, sick bay on that on the wall, wild wall where the camera normally is in sick bay. But how this is our new Romulan bridge for uh, Veldor. But we have the Romulan yeah. wall Veldor. there. For the glory of the Praetor. But th this is a, such a versatile set. Now, some people say, well, why don't you just use green screen? But we are just so real set kind of people that we just make do it and we do it. We have we have a Romulan chair, which I think is is being taken by Kevin Dye, who is our Romulan expert. And he's just going to he's going to up the Romulanization of that of that chair. But yeah, this. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is that from Air Gear? I remember that. I <laughs> I picked that up from a from a from a fan uh, up in Ohio and and got that down here. <laughs> Kids love being able to flip switches and turn lights on and off and 
This is where most of the kids on the walkthroughs playing with stuff. Which is a safe one for them to play with. Not not the real one. Not the real one. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, we're going down to here to the next place. Oh, ooh, ooh, look at this. The tortured Dan chain. They, they, <laughs> Jeffrey's too. The Jeffrey's too. You remember the, the, the best thing we've ever done in here. That's right. Tortured Dan. Tortured Dan is a one. And Ed Ray Camp, because he's a little bit claustrophobic. So he's up there and there. We're up at the very top looking down. Is there a ladder over there? And we had a, this end closed off and we had a smoke machine and we blew smoke in there and then closed it off. So the smoke had ladder's gone. The ladder's gone. <laughs> Commander the nacelle you're in is losing his structural integrity. Emergency bulkheads are closing. Get out of there now. Not a chance, sir. Failure is imminent. But you can show the platform to stand, to stand on. But yet to, to get up there, you have to go through one of the one of the many turbo lifts. And again, we're gonna break the magic. And there is a platform, and there is the exterior of the Jeffreys too. So to shoot down there. You know, there's usually a ladder right here, and you get up on that and shoot down into that. And the flat we had the uh, the uh, uh, emergency hack that is in Revex is in Sigbeck, my five Sigbeck, next to the uh, the cage area of Helm. And this is another place that it's it's going to get me misty because it in that scene where we tortured uh, Dan Scanlon, our electrician Steve Lackey, you know we. we we didn't give Steve any direction. We just said that we wanted to shoot this with some short circuit and some electrical wire. Yeah, make it all flashy. Make it all flashy. I think that was his direction. <laughs> and what he came up with was just brilliant. I mean, this was lit up like, not like a Christmas tree, but like you would see a damaged conduit. We were he did it and a little bit of smoke and a little bit of uh, CGI and it lighted. It was so perfect, just so perfect. Never, never forget when lights and the fiber optic. Yeah, the fiber optic. Yeah, this terrifies. But this, I, I remember Steve Lackey coming down wearing all of that, that those lighting before he put it up there. I, I, that's seared into my memory, and we we really, 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 really miss Steve. And then we're almost to the piece de resistance, but little things that have been added. Now, we don't n normally see this highlight. I think we just used it in this episode. Commander Chamberlain had grabbed a replacement. The last time I saw him, he was headed up there. But this is a, an access. I think we would also call this a Jeffrey's tube. This is a vertical Jeffrey's tube. Where the nice thing it is, is it is you to show Dan going up and yeah, you can't climb this thing. It's just not very easy, <laughs> especially for... Us older guys. <laughs> yeah. And we don't bounce as good as we fall. That's right. And then right behind that is the brig. I don't think we've ever used it as a brig, but, never, but no, we haven't. We've, we've seen it in different fan films. We used it uh, in the replacements, I think. But we didn't, right. but we just didn't, sh we just saw that it was a room. Yeah, that was just a room. Transporter board? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And the replacements that we weren't using it as a brig, we put it, the transporter in of the replacements in there and used it. They were talking of the yep. machine yep. when it was on the planet. But just, uh, every once in a while I got to look back because you just look back and then you just, you just oh, learn. Oh, the very first episode. Where we're we coming in and telling you in half of the transporter, out of the transporter. The, no, the, the shuttlecraft bay. The shuttlecraft bay. This is the entrance of the shuttlecraft bay. So those doors were closed, and we had our very first scene here where we were taking a shuttlecraft onto the ship. We'll launch on time, Commander. Just run a thorough diagnostic on that system and put a thorough report on my desk by zero hour tomorrow. All right, sir. You'll have it. <laughs> Welcome aboard, gentlemen. Well, excuse me, because you know that's what those controls are. Those are the, the pressurization of the bay. Uh, that's very dark in here. But it says hangar deck pressure. But that, like I said, the attention to detail. And when you close these doors, you know the the magic just happens, and you just don't. 
you don't see that you're on a set. You know, that's what the amazing thing is on this. And you know why the, the sets were built as exact as humanly possible? Yes. Hours, studying hours and hours and hours. Wait a minute, I, I have to find my favorite joke. My favorite joke are these 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 letters that are on the conduits. These co these letters are on most of the conduits on the original set, and they made it to here, the GND in it. And that was a private joke by Gene Roddenberry, and it stands for Goes Nowhere, Does Nothing. <laughs> yes, those literally go nowhere and do nothing. <laughs> All right, now we're going on to the piece de resistance of our of our little tour, and you know again we got the backstage, and you have to just for, forget about that. That it's the bridge. See, all I had to do was take just a few steps, and wow, you're on the bridge. The only thing that's missing is the, the little tweets and and sounds and that you hear from the from when they're on the bridge. Just oh, there, there they are. That's right. That's that's what you hear. That's what you hear. It's right. You can go ahead, do it, do it, do it. Give me a But and so when they do the fan appreciation weekends, they will do the sounds so that when people get on here, they they can get the the actual effect. But you know, this is almost a 360 bridge. Almost. It's really only missing one and a half stations. This is to to get this. You know, in the 60s, when this was built, these were made to come out so that they could get the camera equipment in, and then they could enclose the bridge with all the stations and have a 360-degree bridge. Favorite memories? Favorite memories is that is the chair. The chair. The very, the, everybody wants to sit in the chair. And, you know, I got to sit in the original Mike Bednar chair, and our very first show that we did we had two scenes, which took all day to film, and I literally, literally sat in that chair for nine hours. Not that particular chair. Sir, that's not bad for a night drill, but we need to shave a few seconds off. Nice, sir. Excuse me? You heard me, sir. You better stand down, mister. No, you stand down, sir. We all here know what you did. They were our friends, and you got them all killed. Anders, escort Brasso and Piper to their quarters. Oh, I don't think so, Commodore. I mean, after all, you have a point. You are going to get us all killed. <laughs> in fact, why don't I do us all a favor and end your little reign of incompetence now? Oh, there goes the sounds. There it ends. But I sat in that chair for nine hours. It was... It was March, and it was freezing cold. My nose was red. My ears hurt. I had to wear gloves. But I enjoyed every second of sitting in that chair. And that chair impressed the heck out of me so much that I had to start making those. So I, I made a chair for the studio when it was sold to the current owner, Ray Tessie. And I've since replaced it with a second chair. Uh, I, I'm getting a little bit better. So then in the next five years when I come down to get another chair uh the, my, my next chair I maybe we'll have we'll have it have uh, internet and, and Netflix and cable I, I'm not sure but I'll I'll put some sort of upgrade on that but that's my favorite story ab about the bridge we're in, orbit, we're in orbit that's right this is a greater new addition to the studio is the view screen which it, you, you could actually see the ship orbiting a planet and we use that in uh, one of our episodes and then we've also you know superimposed our our uh, our own stuff and i love the blue border because you know when they filmed the original series they i don't know if the blue border was part of the set but it was in post so that the special effects guys knew where to put the graphic so they just said hey whatever graphic we want it needs to go inside th that blue border and I believe the, that's why there's a blue border on the desktop computers. Right. Blue border, guys, get it in there. And the great thing with the rear screen projector is if it needs to be green skin, we just light it with a green background. Yes. And it's the perfect thing. It, there's no shadow on it. And you just super put anything you want in post over that green screen. You don't have to hang another green screen and then worry about lighting it because it's already lit. It's already there. You can adjust the, the shade and be whatever color you want. Oh, 
And if it needs to be blue because it's well, it can't be blue because of this. That's right. Because that, that would disappear. On like uh, continuous episode of Lolani, they couldn't use green screen because she was green. She was green. Yeah, oh, goodness. Green. Oh, goodness. So, Randy, what's your favorite memory of the uh, of the bridge? Right here. What What is that? Where are you at? I asked me to tell you about it from the very beginning. I'm going to tell me about the very beginning. Well, first, uh, well, that's got us on line. T t tell me, tell me everything that happened from the very beginning. First, the earth cooled, then the dinosaurs kept, <laughs> and then they got all too big and fat, and they all died and turned to oil. And then the Arabs came, and bought Mercedes Benz. Not that far back. <laughs> but yeah, here's your engineering station. Now, off. Oh, the ship has already been retrofitted back to the the USS Constitution and the the uh, a Constitution class class uh, plaque, but we do have our own very very own plaques for uh for our for our our, our uh, series. I think we're getting them. There we go. So there is the the yeah. Dominion. That just goes over that. That just goes over that. Replaces that. That's put back with everybody else's. And then we we've, we've got. A Different different plaques. We have one for the Constitution, one for the Defiant, one for the Republic, and of course one for the Dominion. This ah. is a great place to hide your glasses. That's right. Shoes off, and you put them behind here, and then nobody knows you're not that you wear glasses. And I should forget to put them back there, and which I did in one scene in one episode. And you'll notice that one scene, the people that are up there are really good and in focus. And I am way out of focus. So that's to hide the pat when I'm wearing my glasses. That's right. Well, I, I I have to highlight one more station, and this is the the communication station. You know, the communication station means a lot to me because I asked my wife Tracy to be our communications officer, and you know, Tracy and I've been married for 13 years, and it, she's deaf. And so when we asked her to come do some of the Star Trek stuff with us, you know, she can speak very well, but we gave her one or two lines that she could comfortably pronounce. And then just one day I asked uh, Randy, I go, you know, what if we just took this in the opposite direction? We're going to bring her in as a series regular and we're going to make her deaf, a communications officer who's deaf. We had, you know, Star Trek The Next Generation had a blind navigator. So why not a deaf communications officer? And we explained, you know, that the deaf are like people. People are people. So she communicates with sign. The universal translator translates all her sign into the spoken word. And she was the only person who could wear glasses on the set because we explained that the spoken word was translated into sign on her glasses. Excuse me. Bridge, deck seven airlock. Base personnel are disembarking. Ready for launch. Deck seven, bridge, acknowledged. So she was still able to function uh, as a communications officer. And being married to a deaf woman and having all her friends, I know that deaf women love to talk. So they're just like everybody else. You know, being deaf doesn't mean that you can't do something. So the, this station really means a lot to me and you know, I've I've had a few few shots of you know me in the me in the chair. Hold on a second, let me let me get it. Me in the chair and 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 Tracy in the background, and uh, really miss her being uh, being part of this. And and she was has been with me since the very beginning. You know, making these 13 hour long drives or, or flights down, and uh, miss her today. Miss her today. Here at scenes, there's Malmstrom sitting in that chair. Oh wow! Oh, uh, yeah. Turn around. Turn around. Face, face, oh. fa face the. Uh, no, face the. Uh, face the there you go. So you there we go. Spot. Yes. So I, yes. So I can get uh, combat <laughs> in the call scene. Alan Powder. Your <laughs> you did put it in the call scene one, one time. Alan Powder, your bald spot. Uh, one of the things, especially sound, is the Af this is normally turned off when it's not in in the. Uh, in shot and screen because you can hear the motor on the microphone. So we turn that on only if it's actually in the shot. And as uh, Randy pointed out, 
hiding your glasses is a great spot, but also since these cushions come up, you can hide your script. Okay. There you go. I never thought of that. Gosh darn it. I, th- I did it all the time because you guys usually let me know at the last minute because you can't do that. You hear that when you see me on set, it's because somebody couldn't show, uh, had to cancel because, I mean, if she get a paid gig, go do the paid gig. I don't blame her at all. That's right. That's right. And she and she lets us know in advance, but uh, that's why I'm always reading my script because I get told very close to the last minute. And you nail your lines. You know, I think I think the three of us, we have... We have an uncanny ability not to be able to memorize lines, but we can read something, read it back, and then we can act it. And after the third try, we, we've got it. You know, when I try to do bloopers, we have very few bloopers that I can use because we don't actually mess up our lines. Well, airplane is a perfect example. I kept saying, was it ratio instead of radius? <laughs> ratio to the radius. I, mean, I don't know why it kept coming out ratio. It's radius, ratio, right? And oh. that, that was the one where I had to keep going over and over. How are you going to diagnose this? I'm going to defrag the buffer and initiate a level four diagnostics. Next. What is the turning radius of a 1972 Volkswagen Beetle? 5.5 meters. Next. What is the fastest animal on the earth? The cheetah. Well, my favorite uh, dreadnought scene was actually not me. It was when uh, our first one, uh, because we couldn't use the chair, and you, uh, Randy goes, oh, oh yes, sit in it, and Gary goes over here and puts his hand on it, and it's a, it doesn't seem like it's mine, which perfectly fit in the story because <laughs> Kevin DeBrusso had just taken over. That's right. Um, Commodore Vista, but it's like, He's used to him being in the chair, not himself, so it fit the story, even though the real reason is we were not allowed to use the chair because it belonged to Vic, and he wanted his chair back, and we did not want to accidentally, you know, mess up. Exactly, exactly. So we could send it in the chair, so we had to fit it in somehow that why Captain Brissot was not sitting in the chair, but it, it just fit. Well, well, what? Well, are you going to stand there and stare at it all day, or are you going to sit in? I don't know. I don't think I'm ready. It just doesn't feel like it belongs to me yet. Hmm. I think I understand. Things happen, and it makes it work. That's it. That's it. And, and the, the other great thing about working with these two is they are so open to suggestions. We shot extra footage this weekend that were not in the script, were not even thought of. And it was like, oh, how about this? And they went, great. I mean, Victoria had a great idea. We yes. One, I yes. What was it? We yes. got that. And it's going to fit perfectly in the story. It sure is. And uh, we'd love to tell you about it, but we can't. <laughs> That's right. But that's. But we got some great, uh, great footage this weekend, and some great audio this weekend. And that's the way we roll because it's it's. Okay. What's that? That is the turbo there. All right. Interesting and fun things happen to Catherine Russo. Oh goodness gracious! Goodness gracious! <laughs> and what would be remiss if we did not mention one? Where were we? Uh, no, we're not going to reenact it. So, so every time Randy gives me a script, there's always something interesting in there. And he says, I, I can't wait for you to read this script. And I go, what? And he goes, well, we lose a security guard. And I go, well, I think I can emote, you know, sadness that I lost a crewman. He says, yeah, but you have to explain it to the wife of that crewman. And I go, I think I could do that. And oh, yeah, she's going to slap you. And I go, he's going to, she, he's, she's going to what? She's going to slap you. He says, he says, well, she's just going to miss me by a few inches, right? I said, like, well, you know, we couldn't do it that way, but it would be really better if she actually connected. Look, look, yeah, and watch. See, it's no big deal. It makes a little sound, and it doesn't hurt. Yeah, but Gary, is she, we did seven, eight takes. Seven, eight takes of me getting slapped. Captain, may I have a moment? Of course, after you. Deck nine. Lieutenant. 
I am sorry, but this is what we signed up for. We all know the risks. Lieutenant, you only get one of those. And then his jaw was getting so red. And then there were some people that couldn't be here for the turbo lift scene. So later on, before she left, she goes, oh, we can reenact that scene. And she really let me have it. Oh, goodness. And then the, the, the way, then Randy's makeup of, of this was for the episode Mom, you know, when Captain Brousseau's mom was here. Uh, now, I, I don't even think that this, this thing I'm getting ready to say was even scripted. I think it was, it was made up as we go, as we went. Jason, I love you. I said, I love you, Jason. I love you too, Mom. Helm, get us out of here. Set a course anywhere. That's right. No. My mother my mother comes up and I'm kicking her off the bridge for her antics and the the the, the, the actress um Joan Schuermeyer. Jo Sh Joan Schuermeyer. Schuermeyer. All of a sudden she I, she just steps out of that turbo lift and she goes, Jason, I love you. I don't respond. She goes, Jason and I love you, Mom. And she comes up and she puts her hand on my cheek and gives me a kiss. And it was just a, it, everybody was holding their aww in until after we we did cut. And it was it was hard holding. That in, it, was, it was I don't see it. It was that thing that Joan thought up at the last, at the last second, and it just and it fit and it, it fit was perfect and it. And we awesome. Yeah. We can get to work with her again. Oh gosh, yes. It's so so sweet. So it's Brousseau's mom, so and of course telling the Klingon. Bait, bait, bait. Yeah, telling the playing the Klingon, what's going on? Oh goodness gracious. What's the meaning of this? Why did you fire on us? Why are you skulking around like a frightened little girl? That was a single low yield torpedo, a friendly nudge. But I have several dozen more here, so I'm already aimed at your weapons, your shield generator, and your bridge. Don't try me, Captain. But yeah, that 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 was a very memorable. I was trying to forget it. So that was a that was a very memorable scene. But that uh, I think I think that's Randy's favorite parts of these is how can I torture Gary in this one. By giving him these great big lines and getting hit, and oh yeah, he's gonna get kissed by his mom. And um, we kind of did a tearjerker. Was the couple? Yes, they're talking about how they didn't want to be rescued. Yeah, that they, yeah, just leave them. That they were, they were resol resolute. They were ready to, yeah, you know, to, to, it, to be gone, done. And we did that before. Don't say we did it before there was a view screen there. Yeah, it was a green screen. Yeah, it was a green screen. So we had to we had to put in our CGI view screen to put them up there on the view screen. Wayne, Astrid, please reconsider. We can quarantine the planet. We can somehow make it so you can live in peace. We appreciate that, Captain, but our resolve is firm. We have the upper hand at the moment, but it's only a matter of time before someone else as bad as Kitaka comes along. Sir, if you restore our orbit, we could spend eons here, battling for control. The very thought of it makes us weary. Farewell, Captain. Godspeed, and good luck to you all. We are many. We are one. So, I uh, know speeches that they gave, they nailed it so well. Yes, you know, these, these actors and actresses that join us, but I'm stepping up to, to the air just to get a beauty shot of the bridge because now, you know, all, all the, the talent that, that comes to the venue and gets on the sets, you know, their, their talent would be wasted if it wasn't for the beauty of this set. And their talent is just, is just expanded upon and, and blown way up when they get to act on this. Because that's Randy's superpower is to get people to come to this studio to help us act. I think all he has to say is a couple words. We are doing Star Trek. That's five words. And they go, we're in. And then they come and they act and they and they come back. That's the that's the amazing part of Randy's superpower 
is that he can get these talented folks. And then, you know, just the behind the scenes folks. I wish we'd have had more people today. You know, Alan is just one of them, you know, who brings his talent for our sound and just makes this episode sound so well. Because while Randy's superpower is to get actors, we're not. And so we have to sound and look good to be able to make up for our, our lack of, of acting ability. One of our biggest unsung heroes is Sam Rooks. Very true. You, you never see him on screen, but he is the gaffer. He's the one that makes us look good. And we just don't say enough on how much we appreciate the, the hard work all those people behind the scenes do. And that, I mean, they're here. They're ready to work. They they pitch in. They ask what else can be done. It's it's not like uh, that. That's the great thing about fan films. You're not. It's not like a paid job where they oh I got to go do this now. No, they're here. They're eager to do it, and they're asking what else they can do. And and we are so grateful to have all those people, Sam and Dan and Kevin and. Uh, Greg and Jeff and uh, Terry and uh, there, there's so many, Donna, so many people that, that, that are involved in these productions that we just can't do it without all. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And we love them all. We love them all. And, well, and, and Kelly, now. Yeah, a new 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 crew member has come all in touch. Well, this this is a perfect time to segue to something real quick, and then we'll we'll end it, and that is our memory wall. You know, one of the the, uh, the the traditions that was started by Starship Farragut was to sign these set pieces, and then Star Trek continues con continued the 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 tradition when they shot a production that everybody would sign a portion of the wall. Now, what Dreadnought Dominion has done is we have one piece of wall where we will have everybody sign for all the episodes that we have done over the years. And we've tried to put all those 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 uh, those uh, episodes up there, and then everybody will sign. You know, there's there's my chicken scrawl, and you know, Dan Scanlon, and John Sims. You know, Quincy. You know, Sam Rook. There's Sam Rook's the gaffer. You know, Micro Clug, one of our one of our DPs that just made us shine. Goodness gracious. And our first uh, communications officer, that's, uh, no, Chief Comms Officer, Piper? Yeah, Piper. And then just everybody. I'm looking for some more names that I, that I recognize. Where, where is yours, Randy? Rachel Pitsy on them. Rachel, oh gosh, yes. Harriet Burnett. Yep, Harriet Burnett. Oh, well. Mine's under the thumb. There it is. There's Alan Anderson. There's Alan Anderson. Well, I was still a lieutenant. That's right. He's still a lieutenant. We, pro we promoted him. But uh, what that's the one I was going to, because out of this humongous space, dead center. So this was just this was just made to be is uh, a Steve Lackey, who we tragically lost last year. Um, we really miss Steve and his signature is dead center of this of this board. So we, he, he'll always be with us, always be with us. And we'll remember him. You know, Steve was the one of the unsung heroes, just like Sam, uh, who just do things. And he, you know, we mentioned earlier how how Steve did the lighting for our, uh, our our Jeffrey's tube scene. But we just we wouldn't be able to tell the stories without Steve. And leaned on screen a couple. All and beyond screen. The uh, and the high season uh, in the engineering. Yeah, he's also up in in the um, the. Um, what you're calling a one shop in North yep. Carolina, but you know some people ask me how how do you how do you do a fan film, and 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 you know they're they're asking me the technical aspects you know mm -hmm. editing and camera and and costumes and props but it, what where it all starts is right here, you know one man cannot do this one woman cannot do this this is a team and it doesn't matter what your role is if, if the role if your role is a gopher or your role is the gaff go get lunch go the go the go that person that goes and gets lunch without that person this 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 thing called a fan film just falls apart so it's a it's a team effort so every name up there is it it just 
means volumes to us. So that's that's what it takes to make a fan film, folks. Is that people people who share your vision and uh, and uh, will show up and donate their time and sometimes their money. Thank you very much, Alan. <laughs> and and you know I am I I have some talent. I I do I do costumes. And then we have the unspoken heroes, you know, like Ed Oborowski, who contributes so much to the, the upkeep of uh, the set, and and got and we get him on screen, and uh, and we got him, got him, in, and and Warbird, yeah. and we can't we can't end this video without thanking Ray Tessie, who we wouldn't be here without him, because you know Ray purchased this studio and kept it alive, and just like myself, who. And, you know, I keep a team to make a production, but Ray has a team to keep the studio here. So Ray's uh, involvement and, and effort just sh just overshadows mine and everybody who makes fan films. But because but without Ray, we wouldn't have a venue to, to come to. And then and Ray's got folks like like Alan and Sam and everybody else and, and Terry, the volunteers and and uh, and Dan Scanlon, who are, are always here for that. So, any closing closing comments, gentlemen? I think not. I think we got it all. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper, folks. We will see you. Help keep the dream alive by continuing to watch and donating to both D Dreadnought Dominion and to Neutral Zone Studios because the landlord still wants his rent every month. And for some reason, the electric company wants the electric bill paid. Dang. It takes electric to run the light. It sure does. It sure does. So eat for, for my ugly mug. And, you know, goodbye from Gary Davis and uh, the, the set of Dreadnought Dominion at the Neutral Zone. Thanks for watching.